Hey garden friends, welcome to my tour of the Rose Alley. This is the first week of June in 2023 and the Rose Alley has come so far even in the three weeks since I did a video showing you why I was planting the roses. I was using um, rose cages. So it's time to get an update because the iris are blooming. Now we just had a thunderstorm so it, there's water all over them. Uh, but it makes it a little bit prettier and the lighting was perfect. I don't know, I, I had you point a little bit this way because my hummingbird feeder's right there and they're fighting over it. <laughs> I thought you'd get a little shot of that. They're, it's fun. I have several feeders set up all around and the aggressive males, they just are very protective. But I'll tell you what, when the mamas bring their babies, the males don't mess with them. The mamas are pretty protective and I need to get a video of that. Uh, they have no problem flying very close to me. I guess they're used to me out here. So anyways, if you are new here, my name is Pam and I blog vlog here on my small mountain lot. I'm a zone eight and I have a short growing season because I do grow in the mountains in our woods. So let's get going and let's take a tour of the Rose Alley with the iris in bloom. All right. <laughs> They're just determined to be in my video, aren't they? <laughs> Let's get going on our tour. Welcome to the Rose Alley this first week of June. The iris are blooming. The peonies are getting ready to bloom. And look at that, just the color is beautiful. It's gonna be wonderful. The peonies will probably get started just as the iris finish. So it will carry on. That's the beauty of succession planting. Now, what should be noted is in different areas, different things will bloom together and uh, in succession. So you have to just kind of do trial and error for yourself. We just had a thunderstorm and you'll see what it did to, this is my tiny monster hardy geranium and it made it flop, but that's okay. I can prune this back after I, figure out whether or not it's gonna come back up. Sometimes if the sun comes out, warms up, and they'll, they'll go back up, sometimes they won't. So I would just cut this back. It would reflush and then bloom on shorter um, branches or what have you, so it'll be fine. And or I can um, put a support up. But we are on the roadside of the Rose Alley. I have a lot more to do here, but what I've gotten done, I have just Loved. I'm really happy that these peonies, my bowl of beauty, were not open yet because this rain would have knocked them over. I had taken the support away from it to work on it and um, I did not replace it yet. And so I got lucky that it did not flop with the rain. So you can see the work in progress I am doing. Um, this soaker hose is coming out because I have um, drip installed in here. So you can see all the way down to the Primrose Cottage, the iris, I can plant so much more iris along here. So I need to get ordering some. So there's so many that I don't have that I want. So and this is up towards the front. I had gotten a little bit done along here. I got it weed eated, tidied up, and um, slowly but surely I'm getting things in order. So let's go around the corner to the Rose Alley. My Brugmansia, which I love down there. This is such a bright color blue. It's a very hardy ground cover. It does great covering up that ugly area. So right here, I wanted to show this to you. Let me get that up there slowly. This is my um, trumpet vine. Now I don't let it just go anywhere. I am training it into a standard or tree form. And as these branches get really long and floppy and what have you, I have some copper wire I can train them with so that it makes more of an umbrella shape that I want. I'll share when I do that. I will share, share. 
So here is my test Gilberville David Austin roses in this barrel. And with it, I have planted, well, it's starting to fade. Now it's been blooming for a little bit. Maybe I'll give you a better video I took the other day. Um, this is Sugar Sweet Lilac Clematis, and that is from Brushwood Nurseries. It's just beautiful. I love it with the roses. Some more iris here. Down here, this is the rose. This is rural England, I do believe. Nope, that's Madame Alfred Carrier. Oh yeah, because this area gets a little more shade. I wanted something that would do well in a little more shade. And that one does. So that one's a beautiful vintage rose. I got that one from Antique Rose Emporium. It's one of the places I do love to get roses. So this here is my Abraham Darby, David Austin Rose, and I, my mom bought that one for me. I had lost, in a freeze, one of mine, and she bought me another knowing I loved it so much. It was one of my first, the very first David Austin Rose I got was, um, Graham Thomas, and I loved it. Look at this. This is my Bell of Walking Clematis, growing up this arbor. I wanted to pair Clematis with the roses in the Rose Alley. This is my Dream Weaver Climber. It was at one time climbing up the porch post, but we needed to do something different, and I will share with you what that is when we do it. But we've got the uh, materials, and so we're gonna support this in a different way. I do love these obelisks, but this side garden, Rose Alley, is on a slant or a slope. And the obelisks, they want to lean with the slope rather than staying straight up and down, especially when we get heavy snows. So look at these beautiful, I love raindrops on the flowers. Isn't that beautiful? Down here. Yeah. These beautiful plants here making a sort of hedge lining the pathway are my Proven Winners Cat's Pajamas Nepeta or Nepeta, whichever way you want to pronounce it. And they have just been stellar for me. They have done so well and uh, they continue to bloom all through the summer. When the first bloom fades, I cut them back and it reflushes very quickly and they bloom again and again. So I don't know if you can hear the hummingbirds fighting over my head. But here's a new one I wanted and this one is Purple Illusion Magic Show. This is a um, Veronica, I do believe. Yep, it's starting to rain on me a little more. I might have to hurry up here but I thought that would be pretty in here and or in the back. I have another one. I put the other pot in the back thinking, I'm testing out where I'm putting them. So just to see how they look. Now down here, this is a um, Chilean Jasmine. And I got this at Annie's Annuals. It was supposed to be hardy in my zone. Many Jasmines are not hardy in my zone. So when I saw that one was hardy, I grabbed it. Now the new rose back there is New Dawn. I have the video where I planted these. And if you go back and look at it, you can see how much this area has filled in in just the last month. It's amazing. So more iris blooming. This is the other side. You can see the road back there behind the peachy irises. And look at these. This is the vintage iris my cousin sent me that she dug up in uh, Idaho from an old farm, abandoned farm stead. So beautiful. The Jupiter's beard's coming along. I need to make a support for that so it doesn't flop. It can get top heavy and then flop down and I want it to stand tall. The breeze is blowing. You know, I cannot believe this is June. We never get thunderstorms in June. Look at my lupin. Beautiful. When I went to the Shriners Iris Garden, they had tons of lupin blooming with the irises. Um, I had also a fuchsia pink one, but I lost that one, so I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna plant more. I did try to start from some seed. I put them in my winter sowing containers, but that was the one that really got smushed with the feet and feet of snow we got. So along here also, 
I have some foxgloves. These are some that reseeded themselves. Foxgloves reseed readily for me and are just an easy flower and I love them. I have some sweet williams. These also will spread from seed and do beautifully. Another rose planted back there by the rose alley. I'm not sure which one that is. I'll have to look up. I kept notes on where I planted what because, you know, I forget. I get to planting so many things. So over here is my quicksilver. It's fading. I need to deadhead it and then let it reflush. And then down here, what is this one? This one might be my rural England. I'll have to look it up. I got rural England from... Oh, did I get that from Heirloom Roses? I may have. But I had put this little fountain here, but I'm not sure it's doing what I wanted it to do. So I made, it's just a pot, an inexpensive, I think that's a fiberglass pot, pretty, pretty lightweight. Uh, dump it out and then I will plant something there instead and use this elsewhere. But look at this. This iris coloring is, I know it's not catching it on the camera very well, but I love it. So many things coming along. I had another Veronica down here. This one is called Bushy Boy and it's supposed to be a prolific bloomer all summer long. I can't wait to see it. Got it, did I say, from Annie's Annuals? And this is my Champagne Elegance. Isn't that gorgeous? It is supposed to be a rebloomer, but I don't, I haven't had a long enough season for it to rebloom for me. So um, I don't count on that, but the bloom I do get is beautiful and it's, it recreates itself or repeats or not repeats. What am I saying? Makes more, makes more rhizomes, rhizomes. I was corrected on saying rhizomes, but you know what? You know what I'm talking about. Either way I say it, right? So back here, more of the freckled. Now these, I will mark and or use these videos to um, later on decide where I'm gonna dig up certain iris to make room for new varieties. And that's what makes it great to have a reference. I also do photographs, but the daffodils, I really need to cut them back now that I deadhead them. This is my Lime Fever Few. I'm really loving it. I was hoping it would recede. Though I didn't know if the seedlings would come up true because I have so much of the other regular and it probably cross-pollinated. The darker green version, it comes up like a weed and I just edit it out. Not the lime doesn't come up, but the regular. I wish the lime came up because I just love that bright. Doesn't it just stand out? That bright, bright color. One of my Delphinium seedlings right back there. I'm hoping that does well and comes up. I have a larger delphinium right back there where the frame is. You can see it around it. That's the support I have for it. Also, it tells me where it's at when, because they go dormant and then they come back up from the ground. So let me turn you to the other side. So this is another hardy geranium I've been meaning to get um, supported because I don't want it to flop. It's a beautiful fuchsia pink. In my secret cottage garden, I shared the blue one blooming in the back. In fact, I think when I took this one out of the pot, it fell in half, and so I planted one half here and one half in the back, and it's just taken off. I bought this at uh, the Botanical Garden in Mendocino, and I think I spotted a flower. Yep, look at that gorgeous color. So when you support it, it makes it more of a like a shrub than just something that flops down. Back there is another tiny monster hardy geranium. That's like the one that was up by the road that had flopped. So um, that one's pretty, very prolific. I, I thought it was supposed to stay small with the tiny in the name, tiny monster. Uh, I think it's the monster that is the true nature of it because it just is rampant. Um, but I just trim it back. So here's one of my Japanese maples planted in this corner. It's in a pot, but I'm pretty sure the roots went down through the bottom of the pot. Now this is my Zephyrine Drone Climbing Rose. And I'm gonna do a different support for this one like I told you I did, was gonna do with the Dream Weaver. Um, again, you can see the obelisk is leaning. So something different. Also, I'm getting powdery mildew 
on it. Um, and I have a fix for that that is ecologically safe. And I'll share that when I do that. So another clematis down here I've planted with this rose. And I think this one is Fair Rosamond. You see it's going along the ground, but it has made it over to the obelisk here. So it's going to climb. So here is some, this is a dwarf um, Achillea. So it stays shorter. It doesn't get real tall. And then back there is the super, what's supposed to be super Dorothy Rambler Rose. And you can see it's got some little roses down there. But that's not what the picture looked like. So I'm going to have to find out. Hopefully it's, this one is still a climber or rambler. Um, and or Super Dorothy starts different than the photo. <laughs> I don't know which, but I have more Sweet Williams here. The um, Sweet Williams will spread my seed, so next year I'll have even more. I don't remember what this is, when I what I planted here, but we'll wait and see when it flowers. And I planted some Nepalina uh, from seed, and that's what that is. So hopefully we'll see. I don't remember how tall it got. It was supposed to stay shorter. I tried to get the shorter ones. Now this is Lamium, also known as dead nettle. This is a different variety. It's white something, I can't remember. And these are very, very vigorous, but you can contain them. I just will prune it back. I'll just prune it back when it goes into areas I don't want it to go. And then, I, cause I wanna keep it right here. Underneath, this is my Pam's Pink Vintage Rose. I got that from Antique Rose Emporium as well. It was a found rose. And I didn't know the original name. They do try to continue to find out. I need to look it up and see. So along here, I did have some ice plant, uh, Table Mountain Delta Sperma, and it doesn't look like it made it. Um, for I had it here for three years and it did fine. So this winter really did a number on it and or the gophers were in there and ate the roots. I don't know because I'm not sure what they will and will not eat. But look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Now, you know what? By the end of the month, this will have changed so much. And I will be sure and bring you back and show you. Well, that one's starting to lean over. I need to support it. So right here is my Warsaw Nike Clematis. This thing will be a wall of purple. The rain can weigh it down, so I need to make sure I keep supporting it up against the wall. Um, and it will continue to go up the porch rail there and just be gorgeous. It'll get very, very, very tall. Now this area right here, I had many things. I had more echinacea, I see one there still. I had uh, oriental lilies, I had, not, not lilies, poppies. And the gophers just ate everything. So um, yeah, I, I have a whole new area to plant, which, okay, I'll take it. I'll just have to buy more plants, doggone. So here is my vintage rose that my husband dug up for me from my grandparents' farmyard. And um, it's a beautiful red. My grandmother always called it a blaze. I'm not sure that it is, but we'll go with that, right? I call it my Grandpa Newt rose because my Grandpa Newt used to sit on the back porch and gaze at it and always exclaim it was the prettiest rose ever. So I love it. Love it, love it, love it. More iris to bloom. Here is some monk's hood or aconite which is another very poisonous plant, it's like the foxglove. Um, I do need to get some wire and secure it up to the deck stairway so it won't flop. But it's gorgeous. And down here is another hardy geranium. Um, I will have to find the name for you, Buck, Bucklova, what have you, but it has these really pretty pink flowers. So I love, I do have a thing for hardy geraniums. They do love it here. And the gophers seem to leave it alone. So this is my patio, my primrose cottage patio garden. This um, needs to be, have some work done on it. I'm trying to figure out what to do because the table and chairs, the legs, you know, they sink into the sand or the pave, paving um, stuff in the center. Now I have some, yes I do, Corsican mint growing in between the pavers. And there's some plants over there that don't need to be growing in between the pavers, so I'll have to pull those up. 
I got a little hosta coming up there. These were just some iris I threw down, so they'll come back up. I'll let them bloom first. I'm a sucker for letting things bloom. And over there, that is another nepeta. That is a very tall white one that a garden friend gave to me. And I do love it. Um, it hasn't ran, I mean like taken off or thrown out seeds that I know of. I'm sure it could, but yeah, I was thinking of putting a bench here and have it facing up so I can just look up at my garden. And behind me is my primrose cottage. But I will take you to the side of, hopefully I'm not moving too fast. I probably am. I think I'm moving slow and then I look at it on the computer and it's like, oh, I'm going way too fast. There is one of my beautiful Japanese maples. I grew a bunch from seed. I had a friend who grew a bunch from seed and he gave me some. So I've got a bazillion. I, I, some of my seedlings I was going to practice grafting on. So that was my intent. I just haven't done it yet. Look at these. That not that pretty? These are my, I can't think of it, Columbine. Sorry. These are the vintage ones, supposedly, that a friend gave to me. Look at this purple. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? And then this pink one. Yeah, she had gotten them from her grandmother's garden, and she's 82 years old, so they're very vintage seeds. So look at this patch of iris. Uh-oh, got one that flopped. That's what happens when you get a sudden downpour. But over here, this has been a catch-all for some things. I do have a rose. That's Ambridge, I do believe, an Ambridge, David Austin rose. It seems to do well there, even though it was getting a lot of shade but it's doing okay and I haven't moved it because you know what, the gophers have left it alone even though there's a big tunnel there. I don't know their rhyme or reason of eating plants because other roses they were eating on hit too nearly to death. So, still a lot of work to go. I haven't been able to get out here since the snow melted a lot or as much as it needed, but this is Aronium, Origeron, no. Aronium. This is also called Heron's Bill. Not Crane's Bill, Heron's Bill, but look at that. That's the white one. I've been trying to propagate the white. I have the pink and I can still find the pink in garden centers. I had a piece that died right there in the center, so I need to divide some and fill in. It looks like one died there on the end too. Don't know why. Other than the gophers have been tunneling in here, so it could be but these over here are doing great, and I love them. I planted some, divided some, and put them over in the circle area in the secret cottage garden, and they seem to be doing okay. But that, my friends, is the Rose Alley and all that it has going on right now. I, I have to say it's doing so much better or it's filling in quicker than I had anticipated. And maybe that's because of the plants that were already here and I'm just adding the roses to it. The roses and the clematis. But I have thought of putting gravel in here, but until I can get to that, I'm not sure. I've had stepping stones here and I had to constantly weed around them. And then last year we put in this monkey hair or gorilla hair ground cover or um, what mulch and it were, has worked very very well and it's it's actually soft on the feet it's not like the big chunks of wood mulch so my plan is also and I may have mentioned this before and I'm could be repeating myself but this I'm going to put more cat's pajamas along this side because I would like it to match and I just think it would be a wow statement to have both sides filled with the nepeta. And I don't even have to have it close together where it's growing together. I can have things in between because you it really catches your eye no matter what. So I also have, these are, this is um, Origeron. This is Santa Barbara Daisy. And they're supposed to spread from by seed, but they're very delicate, unobtrusive. This one doesn't get as much water, so I need to get um, my irrigation um, expanded so there's certain areas in here that it doesn't reach but all a work in process so I hope you enjoyed this video 
Well, I hope you enjoyed my video on the Rose Alley. And you will join me next time when we will do the Secret Cottage Garden. So I was trying to do each one separately so they didn't get too long. And, but I know you'll enjoy all of them. And my Secret Cottage Garden has as much work to be done as any other.